man, it is hot. It's humid. I have got gray clouds moving in. This tropical storm system is moving up the coast. We're going to get a bunch of rain. But here's a good question for you. How deep does water penetrate your soil? So if I put down one inch of water on my lawn, how deep into the soil is that going to go? It's a good question. This question has also come up. You guys have asked a question. I put up a video about how long you should water your lawn and replacing sprinkler heads. Well, a lot of people keep saying, talking about if you water longer with your irrigation system that you're going to drive the water down and you're going to encourage your roots to grow deep. So it's a valid question. So let's talk about that for a minute. So before I start, don't forget, if you haven't got the Bermuda Lawn Guide, get the Bermuda Lawn Guide. It's free in the description below. I link to it. There's one link. It'll take you over to the page. That'll be there. Hit subscribe because I've got 17 videos coming out over the next two weeks. I'm cranking them out as fast as I can trying to get caught up. But today we're going to talk about water infiltration, water penetration. There was a good research article I read on this, and there's kind of a formula you can use. So here's the formula. You have sandy soil, you have loamy soil, and you have clay soils. How far does one inch of water, if it's applied slowly, not in a 20 minute downpour with runoff, but if you have a slow steady rain or run your irrigation system and you put one inch of water, how far does it penetrate? Well, if you want 12 inches of depth, one inch of water on a sandy soil will go 12 inches you need 1.5 to 2 inches on a loamy soil, like in the Northeast and Midwest, will penetrate, penetrate 12 inches. If you have clay soil, like we have here, it'll take 2.5, even possibly up to 3 inches of good watering to reach 12 inches. Now that's a huge difference. That's kind of shocking. Now that kind of throws into question this whole thing about, well, I'm going to run, instead of running my sprinkler system eight minutes, I'm going to run it 25 minutes because I want to really encourage root growth. Well, if it's not getting past the root zone, are you really encouraging deeper root growth? It's a good question. So if I have a clay soil and I run my sprinkler system eight, 20 minutes versus eight minutes, think about this. The average sprinkler system for 30 minutes of running will put down half an inch of water. So that means if I run a sprinkler head for 30 minutes, I may get two inches of actual soil penetration. Am I really encouraging root growth with only two inches of penetration? Think about that, it's just logical, it's just science. So. Running your sprinkler systems longer has always been the thought process. You want to run them long and deep and then let it dry out. I honestly think that's more so for controlling fungus issues than anything else. It's always good for plants to have a wet cycle and then a dry out period. A wet cycle and a dry out period. But we talked about in our watering video, I can't do that to my lawn. I can't let this lawn with all this construction debris and all these root zones and the crappy undersoil I have, rocks and gravel, I have to go to a short watering cycle when I'm in a drought situation. So when I'm in a drought situation, I have to have that short cycle every single morning or my lawn starts to die off. But under normal conditions, yes, a longer watering cycle is better and then take a break and let your lawn dry out. Morning different hat different shirt <laughs> so we had some rain last night here at the house we got probably about a half inch to three quarters of an inch down at the beach house I can tell from kind of some flooding and issues that I can see down there wow I'm thinking we got probably a good three inches of rain overnight down there so let's talk about inches of rain let's talk about how long that amount is delivered. Let's talk about my redneck rain gauge and some things that you can think about. And let's talk about a subject that not a lot of people talk about, which is watering during a rain event. Huh, that sounds kind of stupid. So I actually wrote down notes because the article was written by a PhD, the study he was doing and I'm not that bright. Per hour penetration on sandy soil in one hour, if you have a steady rain event, two to six inches of soil penetration per hour. 
on loam, you can get 0.6 to 2 inches of rain penetration, water penetration per hour. On clay, per hour, it's 0.2 to 0.6 inches per hour on a steady, slow rain. Doesn't it? That's pretty dramatic. That's pretty crazy. So again, we're starting to challenge these things that we're thinking about as far as how long I should water and am I really penetrating my soil? You don't have to believe me. Go run your sprinkler system. On, when your soil is completely dry, I want you to go run your sprinkler system and run it for 30 minutes. And what I want you to do is take a shovel and dig a square out of your yard and look and see. And you're going to see that this stuff really kind of applies based on the soil that you have. Now, let's talk about let's talk about watering during a rain event. Does that make sense? Well, I'll tell you when it makes sense. It doesn't make sense if you have a huge downpour and you have a lot of runoff and you big thunderstorm. Doesn't make sense. But let's say you've got a Let's say you look at your forecast and it's drizzling and it's gonna drizzle for the next 24 hours, a very light rain. Well, number one, you won't have any evaporation. Number two, you've already started your soil penetration. So for soil, the upper layer of the soil will absorb the water that's coming in. Well, once that gets full, then the water can start to go down. That's kind of the premise here. So if you have a light rain or misting event going on and your soil's really dry, it's not a bad time to run your irrigation system if you truly want a deep watering. So again, the initial water is just gonna penetrate and absorb that, that upper inch. If you have a light rain or light drizzle and you wanna get a deep soak cycle, it's not a bad time to run your irrigation system. I really hadn't thought about that before because I'm doing the daily cycle. I understand my water is not going to penetrate deep. I have to sit around and rely on the rain gods to sort of water deep on my lawn. That's what I rely on. I rely on nature to do my deep cycles. I take care of the survival watering just on the top. Now let's talk about my redneck rain gauge. It's always important to understand you, you go to sleep and you wake up in the middle of the night and you hear it raining. Well, how much rain did you get? Just have something outside. This is my redneck rain gauge. <laughs> Just leave it outside somewhere. And when you come out in the morning, you wonder how much rain you got. You can pick up the bucket and you can look and guess what? You'll see there's an inch of rain inside of it or there's half an inch or two inches of rain. What's funny is sometimes during a big rain event, I can actually go out to my pool and I know where I keep my pool level. I'm always looking at that every single day because I have a leak. And so I'm on making sure I'm not leaking again. I'm getting a new, I got a new pool liner on order. So I'm always consistently watching that. And I can come out and I can tell how much rain I had overnight based on my level of my pool. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this video today is I'm getting ready to shoot an aeration video. We're gonna do some core aeration on the back projects and we're gonna do some spike aeration on the front. One benefit of your aeration, your air core aeration, is you're opening up holes all over your soil. When it rains, instead of running off, those holes will fill up with soil. I've come out and I've seen my holes full of water during a rain event. That soil will slowly leach in. Plus, you also then have oxygen going into your soil. Uh, plants can't take up water effectively without oxygen in the soil. That's one of the reasons why we put down humid char as well too. It's a particulate, it's a substrate that stays there forever. It holds water, it'll hold on to oxygen and just add that extra, instead of just having straight clay soil, it really benefits it. And even in sandy soils, we use it down the beach house. Now, uh, just on a quick note, um, you guys know over the years I work with Andersons on product development a lot and one of the new products we have coming out which we've been testing <laughs> is a really cool product and I've asked them to actually produce a small run that a few of you guys could actually buy and actually test this along with us. Now the product wasn't scheduled to come out to 2022 this next season but I talked to them up there and I said, look, I've had such good results with this. Can you do a small run and maybe let some people order it and just play with it and 
test along with us. Let me show you some of the small testing we've done. Um, they made up a real small sample for me. So what I did was I went to a couple lawn areas. I went to lawns that were not heavily fertilized and then I went to lawns that were heavily fertilized and were testing the difference. But you can see, this is pretty cool. So Barb's lawn does not have irrigation. We're keeping it at a two, we're keeping it at about two inches, pretty long. But see that dark green circle right there? That is that new product. It's been applied in this whole area, not just the circle, but this whole area for about 10 square yards has received the same amount of water. And this circle right here is twice as thick, twice as tall, and twice as green. So, <laughs> all right, so here's another spot right here. See that dark green spot? Now it's kind of hard to see because Bill cuts his lawn mower with a zero turn so he gets a lot of scalping and plus we're in a drought and he doesn't have irrigation. But there's a dark green spot right there that has had the treatment. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not. I wanted to do a crazy little test here and on each one of these sidewalk cracks, I actually sprinkled the line and today, this is Oh, just a couple days later, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but I have a dark stripe, dark stripe, dark stripe, dark stripe on those spots. That's really cool. <laughs> I just noticed that. That was the first day I applied that three days ago, and I've been doing water on this whole strip just a little bit once a day, and all of a sudden I've got dark stripe, dark stripe, all in those cracks. I just don't know how to see it. That's, that is so cool. So my lawn, my lawn's looking great. If my lawn looks like crap, I'll tell you it looks like crap. My lawn's looking great. We've come out here, we've done a lot of cutting on it. Um, we've put down a mix of PGF Complete and PGF Balance because I'm low on phosphorus. And we've done dirt booster treatments to it with the uh, good fungus spray on it. It's just looking so nice, so good. No fungus this year, no weeds this year. Someone asked me about cutting height. Um, we were cutting at a true hard half inch all season i've bumped it up just below three quarters just because it's july and august and uh man it's just really hard to manage half inch long when you got a lot going on in life so basically take that information in and sort of think about your watering schedule i think it'll help open up your mind a lot of people say that i run my sprinklers a long time because i want my soil to get really wet down deep um, yeah, kind of, maybe, sort of, but just think about that. Play with it, hit subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.